Hello everyone and welcome to Gaming News Weekly. Today we are beginning with a story from ZeniMax Studios and Microsoft recognizing not only the first union it's ever recognized, but also the largest gaming union in US history. So if we look here, Microsoft has voluntarily recognized a union formed of about 300 ZeniMax Studios, so a very uh, large union here. The studios include Dishonored developer Arcane, Skyrim maker Bethesda and Doom, Dev uh, id Software, and also working on Redfall and Starfield. It is the first time Microsoft has agreed to recognize a union and the biggest video game union in US history. So we've been talking the last few weeks on this uh, on this news about Blizzard and Microsoft trying to buy out Activision and the FTC kind of trying to block them. And I, I don't think we've gone an episode without talking about it. They're claiming, Microsoft is claiming that now this recognition of this union is going to help that or at least alleviate some of these claims that the FTC is making. So they say voluntarily recognizing unions is seen as a way for the megacorp to address concerns about the merger's impact on workers. And then we have a quote here from the senior QA audio tester. We want to put an end to sudden periods of crunch, unfair pay, and lack of growth opportunities within the company. And this is why unions are, I think, mostly a positive, and they've gotten kind of a bad rap for, it seems like, the second half of the 20th century here in America. I'm not sure the history on that, but uh, it, it really is one of the only ways for workers to kind of guarantee that they have some sort of agency when it comes to small things like this. Um, I was a teacher for a very long time. We, of course, have a union, and that is ensures that we are able to negotiate pay. We get things like a 30-minute lunch every day. Uh, we get things like a plan period, so we're not teaching from bell, you know, from eight to four every day. Things like that, because without the union, why would they? Why would they give us those things, right? Um, there would be really no reason on their end because they, they, they don't. They're paying us to do the job, and they see us doing the job as being in front of the students, and so that was always a big thing. Um, and so same here, they're getting paid. They're supposed to just sit at their desk and do their work, but of course we are humans and don't deserve to be treated as such. So hopefully they're able to uh, work on these negotiations and uh, help help themselves out now that they've been recognized. And then this last quote here, four major video game unions have formed over the last year. The aforementioned union at Zenimax, one at Call of Duty developer Raven, one at Blizzard, and one at Spellbreaker developer Proletariat, which is now owned by Blizzard. Thoughts now turn to the first union negotiated contract. So that is the other part of this is that it's not like they form a union, and maybe some people think this, you don't just form a union and get all the things, that would be nice, but if that was true, then I think everyone would be in a union. Um, they do have to, to negotiate. I was part of negotiations for uh, one or two years, and it is quite a battle, because it's it's you trying to speak on behalf of um, your coworkers, and then you have, obviously, the other side who doesn't want to give you everything you are asking for, and there's a lot of back and forth, and it is frustrating and painful. Um, but in the end, they will get things that they wouldn't otherwise, and I wish them the best of luck. So congratulations to the 300 ZeniMax Union employees, and I'm going to be looking to see... Well, we'll never know. Like, negotiations are private. We won't, we, we won't know what comes out of it, but the fact that four of them have popped up over a year is a very promising sign that uh, things are changing, so very, very good. The next story here we uh, comes out of CES, which is the ooh, Consumer Electronics Show, I believe. Um, I think they've just kind of branded now as CES trademark, So, I, but I think that's still the, the uh, name of it. So this is sort of PlayStation's answer to the Microsoft controls that have like the Xbox adaptive controllers that have been around for some time. So they unveiled what's called Project Leonardo. It's a highly customizable uh, controller kit. 
It's designed to remove barriers in gaming. Here's the really nice part to see. They worked with accessibility experts at organizations like Able Gamer, Special Effect, and StackUp, as well as community members and game developers to design a controller kit like this that works out of the box. So really great to see them, obviously, um, looking at external resources to make sure that these are what's actually needed, what's actually usable, what's actually helpful. Um, really exciting stuff to see. So they it's built for people with difficulty holding a controller for long periods, accurately pressing small clusters of buttons or triggers or positioning thumbs and fingers optimally on a standard controller. And here's one nice thing we've seen in gaming over the last few years. Like obviously we've seen a lot of practices that are maybe not great, but I think one thing we are seeing a lot is accessibility options in a lot of games coming out, whether it is for, you know, being able to hold a button instead of having to like tap a button a lot um, or colorblind settings things like that are, are definitely popping up more than they were, I think, even five years ago. So that plus this hardware, uh, these hardware things, uh, it's really nice to see uh, this coming out. So three big features here, uh, hardware customization. So it's going to be this huge kit of swappable components, button mapping so they can map basically any button to anything they need, and profiles so that they can save those buttons um, up to three profiles, it says. And up to a couple other features here, up to two uh, Project Leonardo controllers and one DualSense can be used together. There's some um, 3.5 millimeter aux ports so that they can plug external and third party accessibility accessories in. They can reposition the uh, analog sticks closer or farther apart and it lays flat. So if you see a picture of it, it's, it's kind of like a big circle. And so if someone cannot hold the controller, they can just lay it down and are stable, still able to push and, and function that way. So we'll keep an eye on this. Again, this is just from CES. This is not released yet. So we'll see um, if there's a release date soon and, and keep an eye on how this all works out. So next story, I was hoping to avoid. Um, I, I wanted to go one week without talking about Microsoft and Activision, even though we already kind of did a few minutes ago. But this will be a quick one because this is directly related to what we talked about, I think, just last week. Um, so this is about the Constitution thing they said, and we talked about it last week, how they have this long statement about how it's like not about how FTC is like breaking the Fifth Amendment or whatever. Um, and, and I was kind of talking about talking about how it's kind of a silly thing to say and the FTC, that's just kind of their job is to do this. And it was all really weird that Microsoft was coming out, like saying that this is unconstitutional. It's a pretty big claim. And apparently Microsoft agrees with me. Um, I doubt they saw the video, but but they are saying that they now kind of regret it. I don't think they use those words, but they are saying the company has now gone back on this argument, admitting it should have dropped these defenses before we filed. Yeah. Uh, and then here is a um, statement from their public affairs spokesperson. The FTC has an important mission to protect competition and consumers, and we quickly updated our response to omit language suggesting otherwise based on the Constitution. Good. And this was my favorite quote of this entire article. Cuddy, who's the spokesperson we just heard from, closed by acknowledging Microsoft has, quote, appreciated feedback about these defenses. I really want to hear what they heard. Like, like I think it takes a lot for a corporation to retract a statement, especially retract an entire, like, I mean, they've rewrote this filing um, to omit this claim. So I want to hear, I would love to know what exactly this feedback was and who was it from? Because that's the important part. Who is telling them that like, hey, this is a bit much, um, let's back off because Someone is, and I love saying it. So that is all we'll talk about today on the Microsoft Activision front. And now moving on to new releases, or this week, new release, uh, beginning of the year, not a lot. So We Are the Caretakers is leaving early access this week. We Are the Caretakers is a 3D grand strategy RPG from Heart Shaped Games. And that's all I could find for new releases, and that wraps up our news for this week. Thank you for watching. 
like and subscribe below, and of course have yourselves a very nice day.